911, what's your emergency? Help! Help! I've been the victim of another awful movie! Yes, indeed, this week we're going extreme, as I just saw the one, the only, the classic, the creeping terror. <laughs> A movie which has always struck the fear of God into the hearts of moviegoers because of how incredibly inept it is. It's an insult to cinema as a whole. I don't know what it was about the first half of the 60s because a lot of the most atrocious films to ever hit the silver screen were released during that period. Don't even get me started on the Colvin Francis films like The Beast of Yucca Flats, Skydivers and Red Zone Cuba. I've had enough of that guy. They also had Iga, the incredible incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed up zombies, Monster Go Go, Horror at Party Beach, and now this, The Creeping Terror. It is, by all means, the epitome of an awful movie. There's no other definition for it. It's a humongous pile of elephant shit. I don't think we have anything this big. The only so-called movie I know of which tries to pass off a giant rug for an alien invader. But just before we get going, if there's a bad movie you'd like me to review, leave me a comment down below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, let me know your thoughts and feelings on this abomination that is the creeping terror. Makes you wonder who the real creeps are. So, the simple plot goes as followed. A spacecraft lands in rural California. Comes out of the flying saucer our infamous carpet monster in question. I mean, look at this stupid looking thing. I have a hard time describing it. It's like a big lumpy caterpillar with big worms coming out of its mouth. It certainly does a lot of creeping, I'll give it that. Caldwell tended to agree with him. I get the feeling that running wasn't invented when the film came out. The only way this creeping terror can eat its victims is for them to just stand still in fright as the alien slowly crawls towards them. In fact, the characters have a death wish, I think, because they literally shove themselves inside the alien's mouth. The thing lumbers around like a slog eating people, but the charisma-free cast of police officers don't think about calling in the army to fight th this thing. How could they lose track of it? It's not like it's discreet or anything like that. People need to take actions into their own hands as a brave hoot nanny guitar player tries to slay the beast with his instrument and fails. So far, he had no success. Although, the army itself is not that much better, as they get swallowed up just as easily. But maybe the creature's mission was to put an end to this awful 60s dance party. The thing traveled all the way from another galaxy just to do this. Now that deserves a badge of honor, I must say. But as for the terror part, the only thing terrifying is that it's complete doo-doo on every level. Poor baby, you'll feel better soon. I rarely see a movie this incompetent, and that's saying a lot. Not only that, but this movie also suffered from production hell. Notably the director and main actor, Victor Savage, who went under the alias A.J. Nelson, disappearing into thin air before the movie was finished after facing accusations of fraud. The guy was never heard from again until his death in 1975. Only God knows for sure. Also, the clumsy producer lost most of the rec recorded dialogue in post-production, which is why, a bit like in The Beast of Yucca Flats, there's very little dialogue between people, and the dialogue we do hear sounds like it was recorded using a cow's asshole. Martin felt sick. Most of the movie is narrated, and I mean, the guy really narrates everything, like if we couldn't figure it out for ourselves. They looked at the rocket in utter amazement then could not understand why the craft wasn't severely damaged. Martin was outraged by the government's intellectual approach. To There's so much of it that it feels like we're watching a documentary and not a fiction movie. There are prolonged scenes with no words as well, just music playing, which gives off a very silent movie kind of vibe. Except that this is 1964! <clears throat> What's interesting about The Creeping Terror, apart from the fact that it manages to mess up on every single aspect possible in movie making, is that there's actually no proof it was ever released in theaters. Historians can't find any billboards or advertisements for it. It started to gain a bit of momentum as of 1976, when television stations picked it up. And it was apparent that the doctor considered this situation a magnificent opportunity for mankind. I don't know why this movie wouldn't trust any stations though. I mean, even for midnight showings, there's a whole plethora of much better B-movies to choose from. 
So overall, all I can say is that people often consider this film to be one of the worst ever made. And do I agree? <laughs> you bet your ass I do. This movie is a crime against humanity. What an extremely awfully awful movie.